In my years fighting crime, I've learned one truth, that every villain is the hero of his own story. Here's your look at the new Hyatt Toys in Justice 2, Batman Exquisite Mini. Exquisite Mini is the new stand series for 118th super articulated action figures from Hyatt Toys. Batman, the exquisite mini. I'm gonna take the tape measure here. There we go. The figure stands 4.3 inches in height, which in centimeters works out to be 10.9 and about 11 centimeters tall. Here's what Batman looks compared next to Superman. And I actually would have thought Batman would have been taller, but it does seem like the Man of Steel if I put them back to back here or actually even just holding them up, does seem like Superman is taller than Batman. And of course, if you guys want to see a full review of the Man of Steel, I've already had a look in the previous video, the previous review at Superman. For some other fun size comparisons, as we already brought one of these in for Superman, I just want to bring in one of the, uh, I think this is Warrior Predator, from also the High Toys Exquisite Mini lineup. Predator is a lot taller, poor Batman, unfortunately, gets the shaft when it comes to heights, but uh, here he is next to the Predator. So, I mean, you could certainly have some fandom uh, glee here by being able to compare Batman or pit him against a Predator that we've already had a look at, also from Hyatt Toys. Though he is a little bit smaller, Batman seemed to fare a lot better in the accessory department. The first thing we'll have a look at is the display stand that comes included with the figure. It is, in fact, the same display stand that came included with Batman, with Superman, I should say. So if you do have these little connector eye joints, which just so happen to come with all of the High Toys releases, you can connect the two together. You see, just take this groove here, the little opening here, and opening there, and just attach the two together. What was sitting rather loose, once connected, even without putting the secondary one in, these two display stands stay very close, very firmly put, planted together. And you can, again, display the figures face-to-face uh, -face in this case, because if they are fighting one another, or you could put them side-by-side -side and just kind of display them on the shelf that way. But again, it's a great way to, uh, you know, incorporate these stands that come included with these figures. Now, also... Let me just take these off here for a second. I'm going to just swap it out for one of the alien ones just to show you how the two do connect. We kind of already looked at this before and you just connect them this way. If you also wanted to, you just take a couple of these stands that I've just got kicking over here for the predator figures. And again, we'll just kind of connect all of these together. There is one, there is two. And you can see the variations in different display stands. Being that they are universal to one another, not only in their shape, but also in the way that they're slotted on the back. Again, like you could just really mix and match these depending on how you want to have these displayed. So we're going to go ahead and take these off, having already looked at these extensively. And we're going to take these ones off as well. There is one thing I did want to talk about for the display stand that comes included with Batman, which also would happen to be the same display stand that came included with Superman, is the placement for the peg. I do wish that, if anything, the peg could have been moved further over. The reasoning why I say that is because the way that it's placed, I mean, yeah, you could put it on an angle, for example, but if you put one of Batman's feet on it, and even if you just spin the figure around, Often at times you'll see there's places where Superman or Batman's feet will overhang the display stand. I just use that as an example just to show you. Again, if you want to just stand them straight up, which I guess is maybe why they put the, the peg where they did. As a museum standing figure, it looks fine. But the moment you want to put him, say, in a pose in which, say, he's fighting Superman, which we will probably eventually look at here. Just get his arms posed, get his, there we go, his Kryptonian, Kryptonite I should say, brass knuckles. So even, even if you put the figure like this, say if you want to display them facing one another, there is going to be this overhang, you see where the feet kind of hang off. 
I think they, their intent was probably so that you would display them standing straight up. But if you, again, if you want to get a little bit more creative, this is probably where utilizing a secondary display stand would probably come in a lot more handy. In the meantime, though, that is the display stand that comes included with the figure. Now we can look at all of his other accessories. And like I said, Batman does come with a fair share. Uh, Superman only came with the interchangeable head and then the two hands. And of course, the display stand. Batman comes with the display stand. He comes with a series of interchangeable hands. Uh, he comes with four extra hands. And those hands are grabbling, grabbing or grappling hands. And then he, of course, comes with some gripping hands for the included batarangs. He comes with a shooting gun for his grapple gun. And he comes with, again, another shooting pistol uh, holding hand, which also kind of, kind of segue itself over then to the grapple gun that comes also included with the figure. Uh, the grapple gun, as you can see, fits very comfortably into Batman's hand. If not for, if anything else, I would say it may be sitting too much on an angle. I guess you could point the hand down and uh, have him holding the grapple gun that way. Grapple gun does look very, very accurate, uh, done in the gold. And then you've got the silver there on the hook. And then the real line on the top there is also done in silver. A nice looking grapple gun. We want to just change it out. Just before I do change it out, the other accessories, I guess the other hands that come included with Batman, are also the kryptonite. There you go, brass knucks. Brass knuckles. Looking very cool. Nice way to display the figure, especially if you're going to be pitting him against Superman. But let's say we want to display him. We'll just detach the hand and replace it with the grabbing or the trigger firing hand. Just attach it to the ball joint. This is also a good way for me to show you how the hands attach into place. You do have to apply just a little bit of pressure. As you can see, like I said, the hand does kind of cause the way that it's pointing sort of causes the uh, the grapple gun to point up, which I guess works also in the game. I believe he shoots the line also up as well. So you can also have him just kind of having the hand tilted forward or tilted around as if he's about to use it as well. I, again, I kind of wish that there was a hand. I'm just like looking at the other hands here, all of which do look like they point the exact same way. It's just it's just more, if anything, the shape of the grapple gun that's the problem. I guess you could angle the hand down or angle the arm down like, like that. And it would look a little bit more like Batman shooting in the direction of whoever he's fa facing against. Uh, the, other, the other accessories, I'll get one hand ready for this. He does come with a couple of batarangs as well. Now, I'm attaching this first and foremost because these batarangs are extremely small. And I certainly don't want to have these lost. I'm going to put the figure down just for a second. Just put it down for a second. Right there. Just right, right there. There we go. Kind of looks very something like uh, what Terry McGinnis would wear or would use. Batman Beyond almost inspired Batarangs. He comes with three of these, actually. Red on the tips. There's a little red light in the middle there. But they are extremely, I cannot stress this enough, they are very, very small. They're actually made surprisingly of a very thick plastic. I don't feel like breaking necessarily would be the issue with these, more so just kind of losing them than anything else. Uh, being that the hands are designed, at least one of the hands are designed for holding the batarang. You just slide that into place. Pray that you don't drop this on the floor or that the dog gets it. Again, it's pretty neat. I like the fact that they include the Batarang there. So those are all of Batman's accessories. Some a little bit more successful than others. I like the Batarangs. I wish the grapple gun didn't have to angle down, or I wish it did angle down versus angling straight up. Um, let's have a look, though, at Batman. I have to admit, right out the gate, I like this costume a lot more than the Injustice 1 Batman. Just sort of comes together a little bit more nicer. It looks almost something that would be uh, something that you would see from like the Arkham games as well. It's it's generally an all black costume with a little bit of gold just popping, peeking its way through, 
where really the figure does shine, no pun intended, is the fact that it's got all this additional silver kind of dry brushing that they've added around the torso plates. He has it around the abdomen, he has it around the pectoral plates of his armor, and he also has it around his shoulder area too. Even the gauntlets, as you can see, get a little bit of that dry brush love. As you can see, the silver has been just, just very carefully touched to the edges there. Once again, there is the kryptonite brass knuckles. Loving the look of those. Might be something I may entertain as permanently displaying with the figure. I got a little bit of that gray also happening around the thigh area and lower further down, also in the calves there as well. Other than that, though, like I said, most of the figure is an all-black figure. There's the much larger plating that's on the back of his torso. Probably also covering over his face is the fact that he does have a cloth cape, which doesn't seem to connect the exact same way that Superman's cape attached. Let's just bring him in once again. As you can probably remember, I'll remind you anyways, there's little tied-off portions, which I don't remember actually in the game. I would have to go back and just double-check that myself. Batman here, on the other hand, is just attached. It's actually attached under this section right here. Sort of a collared area of his armor is where the cape gets tucked underneath. It still gets a little bit of the cape that peeks its way up, almost as if it is sitting up like a collar. The head sculpt is good for its smaller size. You can see even that they've painted the eyes in an, on a nice blue, ice blue color. A little bit of black that's unfortunately carried its way from the cowl area into the face, but you can almost even chalk it up to just shadow than anything else. Mouth is good. He doesn't come with, unfortunately, any other interchangeable head options, but I think he's got a really nice side profile. Again, you can see some nice detailing that they've sculpted into the cowl, at least the head area of the cowl. Kind of very much like a Christian Bale sort of... Uh, cowl ear shape there, the way that it curls. Very happy with the head sculpt. And again, the icing on the cake is the fact that you've got a very superposable Batman figure, which we can kind of already start working our way through the posability on this guy. It's pretty much the same as Superman. His head rotates all the way around, but then his neck also has a secondary ball joint. Now this one's a little harder to kind of get to because he does have that collar that it's sort of just grabbing around the neck area. But Batman can look up, quite a bit up actually. He can look down, he can tilt his head side and rotate his head all the way around. His upper torso is on a very generous ball joint and second and equal to that, a very generous lower torso ball joint. The arms hinge outward. These ones are a little bit more restricted than uh, Superman's, but you can still see like, the torso, these little areas here, do shift on their own. It looks like they're probably tabbed into place. As you can see that the shoulder pads do shift back and forth. So when you are moving the arms up, that's about as far up as they go. Luckily, the shoulder plate doesn't get in the way of that. Uh, he has a swivel, not so much in the bicep area, but he swivels around here in the forearm area. And then equally that, he has a rotation in the hand, which also hinges back and forth. Sometimes because the pegs are really small on figures like this, uh, when you are putting the hands in, you probably already saw when I was changing out the hands, I really had to apply a fair bit of pressure because the ball joint sits so close to the forearm that when you are putting the hand on, sometimes at times you feel as if the hand isn't on completely or the opposite actually, even when you put the hand on, you may think it's on and then realize you just have to push it in even a little bit further than that. Uh, the legs split. Uh, it moves forward, it moves back, it has a swivel in the top cut of the thigh, double hinge happening on the knee, and then you also have the hinge in the foot, which might I might also add does have an ankle rocker as well. You can see rocks back and forth. There's the back side of it just to show you. Yeah, nice looking figure all overall. I'm not sure which one I like more. If this was simply a design of the Injustice 1 Batman, it would be a pretty easy pretty easy call. I would probably say Superman is the nicer looking design, but I like the design costume for the Injustice 2 Batman. And then again, putting him next to Superman, which we've already had a look at. Put the figure right there. Uh, you've got these nice, small, superposable figures. Sometimes, as you probably just saw here, they don't stand the easiest. 
Uh, primarily it's because of their ankles. But again, that's the beauty of these little extra display stands. They include them for a reason. Not only do you get a neat looking stand, but it also helps the figure to stand via the fact that there is that little peg right there. Kind of again, wish it was brought further a little bit over this way. But again, I like the fact that they include stands if you want to get a little bit more dynamic with your figures. And of course, in final looks, I had to do it. I had to pit the two combatants side by side, face to face, ready to battle it out for the fate of the worlds. Both the figures look extremely good, especially when you put them on top of their metallic purple display stands, which I've currently got connected, joined together by those eye-shaped clips that we had discussed earlier. Still wish that the pegs on the display stands could have been moved a little bit further to the edge so that it wouldn't run the risk of having one figure's leg, which Batman's sort of teetering on it right now. Uh, where it's sort of draping off the edge of the display stand. But that's, again, a small gripe. I think Hayatoys probably had planned, if anything, that you would be displaying the figures in more museum standing straight poses. But again, if this is Injustice 2, you're going to wally want to have these guys displayed in fighting scenes. And that's exactly what I've done here in Final Looks. And this is the way that the figures are going to likely stay on my display shelf. Uh, both the figures look really, really good. And actually, to be honest, I'm having a tough time deciding which one I like more. Superman's got some great coloring, and I dig the new head sculpt, the secondary head sculpt, which is probably going to be the permanent fixture atop of his shoulders. Batman's no slouch, though. I'm liking the new costume that they've given him for Injustice 2. It's a far cry better than the one that we got for Injustice 1. If you guys are interested in either one of these figures, some good news is they should be available now in retail stores, or comic stores, not retail stores. They are a little bit more expensive, a little bit more pricey than a retail released figure, but I think the pluses are the fact that you get a lot of posability on these figures, very sculpted, very well detailed, and you get yourself display stands as well. So don't trek, uh, don't trek off to a retail store, rather instead go to a local comic book store and see if they currently have these ones in stock. Today we were having a look at the new Hyatt Toys Injustice 2. This was the Batman Exquisite Mini, now paired against, or fighting against, the Man of Steel. If you guys want to go back and have a look at some of my other Hyatt Toys reviews, there's a playlist called, yes you guessed it Mark, Hyatt Toys. Also while you're at it, seeing as you've just finished up this video, why not hit that little subscribe button if you haven't done so already, as certainly new videos, there's always new videos coming onto this channel and you'll never want to miss out. Thanks for watching guys. And I'll see you next time.